What settings do I use to export the highest quality video for Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, or TikTok? This question was proposed by Eric and Ricardo in the comment section on the Reels on Instagram. So today we're gonna to check that out. So before we jump into DaVinci Resolve and check out the settings, it's gonna be a very quick video. Let's talk about compression because no matter what you do, what method you use, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, social media is always going to compress the resolution of your image. The quality is going to be lowered. Why? Because they want to save space in their hard drive so their server continues to work and the app continues to work for all of us. Now, just as an example, let's look at the reel in which Ricardo and Eric asked me about this tutorial. So at the left, we have our original file recently exported from DaVinci Resolve. And at the right, we have our clip already uploaded to Instagram. And you can notice the abysmal difference. The one on Instagram is blurry, it's not sharp, it's clearly a smaller file. You can see aberrations and pixels in the shadows and it looks tremendously horrible compared to our original. So there's no escaping the resolution. Now, one thing that does occur is an optical illusion, where if you guys are watching this reel in a smaller display like a smartphone, the pixels are gonna be concentrated in a smaller screen and therefore the loss of resolution is not gonna be so apparent. Right here, we're looking at this comparison in a 5K screen. So therefore the 4K clip is gonna be very different to the downscaled image that we see from Instagram. So we always have to keep that in mind. I always look at my clips in Instagram in the computer and they look horrible, but then in my smartphone, they look a bit decent. So there's really no escaping the compression on social media. Your files are always gonna be greatly reduced in terms of quality once you upload them. Now, today I'm gonna show you the process that I found that works better for me, where we see the less amount of compression in my files. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. So I've created a new project and dragged a couple of files into my media pool. So let's start off by dragging this clip over here into my timeline and uh, look at my face. But all of these clips are shot in 4K. They're all at 60 frames per second and they're in horizontal format. So we want to change that because we want to export for vertical for Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts or TikTok. So for that, we're going to go into project settings. For that, the easiest way to do it is go into this little gear over here at the bottom right corner and this will open up our master settings. Now, right here, our resolution, as you can see by default, is in full HD. We want to change that into 4K, which is the resolution of my clips, which is 3840 times 2160. I'm just gonna select it. Then we're gonna mark use vertical resolution, and we're basically swapping our format into vertical. But in the process, what we're doing is basically scaling up our image and therefore we're losing a bit of pixel density. So right here, you can see that our image is larger in the vertical axis. We didn't have 3,840 in the original file. Instead, we had 2,160. So therefore we're stretching our image just a bit to achieve this vertical resolution in 4K. Now, if you've already searched about this topic on how to upload the best quality videos for Instagram, you've probably encountered two different types of opinions. Some people say that you need to downscale your video into full HD, which is the size that Instagram works with, so the compression doesn't work so hard into your clip and reducing its quality. Now, on the other hand, other people say that you should upscale it, so there's a little bit of leeway, so your file isn't that compressed in the Instagram algorithm. In this case, I'm doing the latter. Right here, as you can see, our clip is larger in the vertical axis than the original file that we had. So we're basically making a bigger file so when it's compressed, it doesn't compress it into, let's say 720p or something like that. Now, right here, as you can see, our image automatically scaled to fill all the void, but it may be the case that you guys, when you select OK by changing the vertical resolution, you end up with some distortions. Maybe the image is elongated and distorted, or maybe you're gonna see some black bars. So if you maybe see a little bit of distortion or black bars like here, what you're gonna do is go all the way into project settings once again, image scaling, and in input settings, I'm gonna select scale full frame with crop. Therefore, I'm just gonna scale up so it occupies the entirety of our image and then chopping out all the things that exceed the limit. So I'm just gonna select save and now we have our scaled up clip. So that's what I do in terms of resolution just to make sure that my clip isn't compressed too hard when I upload it into social media and we're retaining a little bit more detail. Now, another thing that I like to do before I start editing, chopping away, cutting, adding all the transitions, effects, and music is make sure that I'm working with the correct colors. For that, I'm gonna use color management because there's nothing more terrible than working with your color grade. You've worked so hard to achieve it. And then when you export your video, you notice that the contrast has shifted or some tones have shifted. 
then you upload it into social media and again the same thing happens you end up with different colors different color grading than you originally had so the way to fix this is using color management which is basically a way that you can regulate the colors that are being edited exported and uploaded so we're going to go into our project settings once again and down here we have color management so Right here in color science, we're going to select YRGB color manage just to make sure that we're working with color management. And then we're going to unmark automatic color management and the color processing mode. I'm going to go all the way down to custom. So right here, we're going to change the values of three settings, input color space, timeline color space and output color space. So first of all, input color space, I'm just going to select Rec 79 a because I'm on Mac or if you're on Windows, select Rec 79 Gamma 2.4. Now, Gamma 2.4 is a universal Rec 79, the universal colors that are being displayed on social media, in your screen, in your computer, in your smartphone, all devices use Rec 79 2.4. So if you're interested in working with the colors that are going to be reproduced in different devices, and it's going to be the same. So we're going to select that one, Rec 79 A, if you're on Mac, because well, this is just basically Rec 79 Gamma 2.4 with a little adjustment to compensate that the GPU of Mac changes a bit of the contrast and a bit of the saturation. So this is a way to correct that, just Rec 79 A. And pause. Hey creators, Tony in the future, I'm editing this tutorial and I found a little mistake that it's worth addressing. So right here, I'm suggesting for you guys to put in the input color space Rec 79 A or Rec 79 Gamma 2.4. This is okay, but it will depend on the circumstance. As you can see in this tutorial, I'm editing clips from my drone. Now these clips from my drone are already in Rec 79. How can you tell whether it's in Rec 79 or not when you don't need to color correct it? So maybe the clips that you're editing come from your drone, from your smartphone, or even from your camera, but the colors are already correct. There's no need to correct them. That's telling you that probably all those clips are already in a Rec 79 color space. The other thing that we're doing right here is selecting a specific color space to assign all of them into. So Rec 79 A or Rec 79 Gamma 2.4. Now, in the case that you're editing clips that come from your camera, but they're shot in log, then in input color space, you should select the respective log. So here I have this clip and it's obvious that this is shot in log. It's not shot in Rec 79. How can I say? Because it needs some contrast, it needs some saturation. Basically, you need to convert this clip into normal colors. Now, obviously, in input color space, we here we have Rec 9 A, and this isn't going to work. We need to select the corresponding color space. So down here, I'm going to find the corresponding color space to the log format. So for me, I shot it in S log 3. So here we have S log 3. If you shot it maybe in Canon, down here you have Canon log 2, Canon C log 3. Down here you have Fujifilm, Leica, Nikon, whatever you shot the video with. So in this case, Sony S-Log3, I'm going to select OK. So if your clips are shot on log, select the corresponding log color space in input color space. But if your clips don't need correction, they're probably already in Rec. 9. So select Rec. 9 A if you are on Mac or Rec. 9 Gamma 2.4 if you're on Windows. Now back to the tutorial. Then timeline color space, you can select the exact same value. In this case for me, Rex 9 a And in timeline color space, you're basically selecting the colors that you're working with. So in DaVinci Resolve, when you're color grading, the color space is gonna be shifted into Rex 9 Gamma 2.4 or Rex 9 a So you're working with the correct colors. Then finally, in output color space, you can select the exact same setting. So for me, Rex 9 a Windows 2.4. And basically right here, you're telling DaVinci Resolve that the colors that you're working with in the timeline color space are going to be the same when you export the video into your final result. So therefore, the colors do not shift. It's going to be the same. Rex 9 A at the start, Rex 9 A when you're editing, and Rex 9 A when you export your clip. Therefore, there's not going to be any tone shift throughout the process. So when I select save, notice that there's a slight shift in terms of contrast and saturation in my clip. And that's basically because we changed the color space of our timeline into Rec. 9 A for this case. Next, you're going to go ahead and start editing, color grading, chopping away, adding effects until you finalize your clip. Right here, I've already skipped ahead and my clip is basically ready to be exported. Now to export your clip, you're going to go into the deliver module over here. And down here, I don't change too much. First of all, I select my in and my out point in my timeline to make sure that I'm exporting the correct part. Then in format, in this case, I use QuickTime, which creates a .mov file because I'm on Mac. But if you guys are on Windows, just use the classic MP4. The codec is going to be H.264, which is also greatly used. And then make sure that the resolution is the same that you're using in your timeline and also mark the vertical resolution box over here. Other than that, encoding profile at high 
and everything else I leave it by default. Now, another thing that I do change is an audio because normally I export my clips in linear PCM for YouTube just to make sure that the quality is good. But I've already checked that when I upload a file with linear PCM into Instagram, the audio doesn't work. So for Instagram, I always like to use MP3, which is just the normal, a bit lower quality and the track date rate at 320 kilobits per second just to ensure that it has a higher quality so there you have it guys my project and export settings to achieving the highest quality video for instagram reels and youtube shorts if i had tiktok i would use the exact same process so i know you guys maybe use a different method this is just the way that i found to achieving the best results for me so test it out and i don't want to see you guys complaining in the comment sections now i'm sweating to death right now it's 8 p.m and we're at 30 degrees so i'm gonna jump into the shower so that's it for today guys remember to like the video if you find it useful subscribe all those things i'm tony fuentes cheers to all of you and i'll see you in the next one